All right, what up, y'all? We're back on uh, Knowledge Itself, aka KOS. I'm Vector. This is Nato. What's up, everybody? We got a special guest in his house, or we should say, a returning special guest. Returning special guest, the mighty, mighty D Will. With this, how are you dramatic, guys doing today? Which is Yo. with this dramatic entrance. Hold on, should we scoot over a little bit? Let's scoot over Probably a little bit. Slightly, slightly. Yeah, I'll yeah. Scoot over to my left. I'm a big man. <laughs> oh, I'm a big man. Oh, I'm a big <laughs> man. That's why I'm mighty. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. All right, so we are in uh, episode nine. Oh wait, where's he going? Oh, just slight adjust. Oh, okay, the, cool. the web o camo. So uh, today's topic, uh, or my topic today, uh, it's gonna be why do hip hop? Well, I should say why do well, yeah, why do hip hop artists often romanticize about death? Dun, dun, dun. So boom, boom, boom. about your topic. Guys, oh, oh, that was I thought you took a deep breath. Like you're about to talk about your topic right now. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna talk about artists out in the community that are out pushing their product and pushing their music, and then go from there. All right, Raji, right. you do well. You want to keep it mystery for now, or you want to? Uh, uh, I'm not 100 percent sure what my topic is yet. I I just kind of jumped on this podcast. Out the, out the blue, you know, spur right, the moment so. type of deal. Once you're, really once you're outside, just kicking it, and then you're just like knocking on the door, like, yeah. hey guys. It's like, hey. Yo, what's up? I'm here. I don't know what's um, going on, but I'm here. So let's do this. All right. So, well, I'll go ahead and just start off with mine. Uh, this is yeah. some good tea, by the way. Yeah, My mine's... tea's all the way over there. Right you know, want me to get your tea? Or... No, I'm good. Yeah. Hey, I'll get it when I'm, when I'm ready. Right. I'm ready. And I just drink my tea just straight up, no sugar. And that, mm. that rawness here. <laughs> All right. Um, so I like my tea like I like my women. Light and flavor. I don't know. <laughs> I, was like, I, look, I was like, what are you going with this? Slightly <laughs> floral. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, well, into jasmine. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is jasmine tea. <laughs> almost just like hot water. I don't know. <laughs> Cousin. <laughs> it's sick. So you like them hot? <laughs> All right. Uh, tangent here. Um, so... All right, so why do hip hop artists romanticize about this? I mean, I mean, one, it's been done for a minute now. I mean, Tupac is obviously like a recognizable figure, especially in the later forms of his life. Um, I mean, even you no know, Biggie's uh, final album, Life After Death, just the, the one telling song like "You're Nobody Till Somebody Kills You." And, like, even when I first listened to that song when that album came out. I mean, it's like, whoa. <laughs> um, even both those, like, I mean, early albums, you can argue that they often talk about death. Hell, even their, their very, very, very first album is called, you know, The Faces of Death. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was what intrigued me. Like, why do you guys think that, uh, you know, artists often romanticize about death? Um, I feel like because a lot of hip hop artists, um, their their upbringing is exposed to a lot of death. Um, I don't think, um, for instance, like Tupac, Biggie, or even we'll say, um, who else did you say? Uh, Bone Thugs. Bone Thugs. Um, their upbringing might be because of death. I mean, if you think about culture of black, black culture, the humanity of um, uh, the hip hop, not even hip hop, just black culture itself. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to slaves and stuff like, and their ancestors have been were, were murdered, yeah. raped yeah. and stuff like that. So I think death, it hits close to home because outside of, outside of, I mean, what the freedom, what freedom do they really have? So I think that's the reason why death is kind of like the ultimatum because their whole life has been taught your culture, your ancestors have been killed, have been slaughtered, have been murdered, have been pretty much sold to somebody else. So I said, that's, I think being in slavery is like the closest thing you can be to, closest thing you can be to being dead without being totally killed. You're mm -hmm. still alive, but what do you have to live for? Right. I think that could be a valid reason why so many artists are infatuated with death and yeah. Yeah. Well, what about from a depression standpoint? Like, um, I know you and I were talking about this like way back. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I believe it was Black Beetle where Joy Badass was doing a scenario like if he died in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know why death is so popular. I think a lot of uh, 
I think a lot of artists believe it's cool to be the martyr. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's like you're that guy that died for what you believed in, so you start a movement. And I feel like a lot of, uh, you know, when people listen to to Biggie, to uh, to Pac, to, to Bone Thugs, you know, they kind of get that idea. It's like, oh, man, these dudes was willing to die for it. Some did die for it. And right. look how look how glorious they are now. You know what I mean? They're they're idolized. Yeah. Um, you know, you got pictures of 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 Biggie and Pac and Jam Master J, Aaliyah, Left Eye, you know, you know, uh what is it called? Um Big Pun. Pun. Uh just got them all. Big L. <laughs> it, it it seems it feels like it's it's glamorized. And to me in yeah. some cases, you know what I mean? There's some people like like uh Nato said there's some people who who live that life and that's what they know. Um, death has been a big part of what made them who they are. <clears throat> but on the flip side, I don't think everybody has lived that life. Right. Um, and I think they just see, you know, like, uh, what was that one joke? It was this one movie with uh, Cedric the Entertainer. And D. Ray Davis, um, he made a joke, and it always it always stuck with me. He was like, "Yeah, man, I'm gonna be a rapper. I'm gonna get shot." He's like, "Why are you gonna get shot?" He's like, yeah, he's like, "Cause if I die, I'm pot. If I live, I'm Fifty Cent." And it's <laughs> yeah, like, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's isn't that crazy that I mean, even me getting into music like I rap in general, I was like, do I have the credibility to be a rapper, hip hop artist? Because I mean, you, today's in today's age, um, well, how about it, 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 it changed now? a lot. How about in the past and like in the nineties? Oh, you had to put up like a macho persona, you know? Like, I you, think, you, yeah, because you know. I, mean, I, mean, I, think, was, I think like Pharrell and Kanye definitely broke that mold. Well, yeah. Well, that was in the 2000s. Though. Was, yeah. But, like, but um, back then, like, it was either tough guy. Yeah. It, it was gangster rap. Yeah. yeah, yeah gangster, gangster rap or conscious is what you was doing. Exactly. You know, one, I mean, one or the three. <laughs> you know, um, to be honest with you, I can't name a lot of non black yeah. rappers outside. Well, that's an R&B artist. I'm going to say John B. But. Uh, there's really none. There was really. I none. mean, there was Vanilla Ice. There was. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, you see, when you say, even uh, they went. Dates. Beastie Boys. Beastie. Uh, when you say Vanilla Ice, it was kind of a. <laughs> yeah, but Beastie Boys. Yeah, Beastie um, was retight, though. Uh, what's his name? Um, the DJ, uh, the fat dude, founded Nas. Oh, MC Search. MC Search, yeah. Um, and of course, there's um, oh, fuck, um. He he went to folk music, um, but he's um, I know he's in the group House of Pain. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. But yeah, it was like um, it seemed like if he wasn't black, you were kind of gimmicky. You know what I mean? Because you know everybody loved Beastie Boys, but their songs are like you know they hit a certain demographic. Well, back then I felt like there was like a certain people who listened. Yeah, to Beastie and to Boys. eventually like. People like, like warmed really up. Excited. I think when Eminem came in, people started getting more like, see, like hey, white guys can rap too. Hey, <laughs> and what's always and what's always interesting to me too is like they always Eminem always seemed to be like the the talk rather than the Beastie Boys, even though the Beastie Boys have been there longer before Eminem. Yeah, yeah. So but funny. um, well, we was talking about death or something, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um. Yeah, I, I think um, that's my opinion. I think a lot of artists today are trying to just, um, I guess, reach that that uh, martyr. Live fast you know, and die young. You know what I mean? And, yeah. And it's like uh, some of them probably just don't give a fuck about how they live in, and, you know, they don't really care about their life. I, if that's the case, I feel bad for you. But That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's also interesting, too, is like even after Pac's death, like, it's a conversation my best friend and I had like years ago. It's interesting to see like now he's regarded as a saint. <laughs> yeah, that's what, like uh like you see paintings of these people like Aaliyah, Pop, Big Pun. They all or they those are like um pictures of saints the way they they're depicted. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So it's... like a lot of people tend to forget <laughs> their some of the things that they they did do. <laughs> yeah, man. But yeah. So. yeah. But yeah, I mean, death is death is one of those things that's gonna always stay relevant in 
all cultures, you know, because oh, yeah. everybody has to die, right? You know, yeah. So even in, in every every aspects or every genre of music, there's someone out there who's talking about, you know, some sort of. But I think on on this scale, our death versus their death. I think some death is more like Japanese culture. Their death mm-hmm. is more honorable. Honorable. Uh, yeah, I was looking for the word. I was gonna say glamour, but that wasn't the word <laughs> I was looking for. It's more honorable. Like, what do you mean by honorable, though? Like from a samurai like standpoint. Yeah, yeah I guess. I mean, so well, yeah, I mean, how many samurais are in Japan right now, though? Not many. Right? <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, what is what's, what is the um? Isn't like Japan one of the highest suicide rates? Is it in in the world? It's like one of those Asian countries. Their their suicide rate is extremely high. If, if it's China or Japan or something, because of the the way they work, you know, it, it um, mm-hmm. you know, their work ethic breaks them because they just twenty four seven. So the suicide rate is high. So when you say, yeah. you know, one culture's you 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 would have to put a time frame on it and stuff. That's too. true. It's like because. I don't know. I, I might be wrong. It might not be Japan. That's the one, the uh, super high suicide rate. It might be another Asian country, but I've read that somewhere. Stop killing yourself. Yeah. Let death happen naturally. Don't yeah. welcome it. Yeah. Well, welcome it. Don't fear it. Yeah, that's... that's because that's, that's the reality of life. But yeah. if you're infatuated with it... How do you want to die? Um, I, I was a joke growing up. I wanted to die in the gym. <laughs> like it was a joke growing up. I wanted to die. In the gym. I was watching. I was watching. Um, what's that movie? Uh, Final Destination. Oh man, <laughs> I no, was I'm like, okay. yeah, I don't watch those kind of movies. <laughs> nah, they're funny though. I was like, man, if death comes at me like that, I hope I die. Cool. <laughs> Quick. Again, I'm. You know what? If I don't, there's always a question you ask. Like, would you want to know how you would die or when you would die? Um, neither. Mm. Yeah, because I don't know that that'll, that'll because when you know, like if you knew, because if I knew how I'm gonna die, I'm gonna try to avoid something. And but you're gonna destiny, your destiny, yeah, destiny. Yeah. What was gonna play? I think yeah, neither. <laughs> I think no, that's something. I think we, knowing like it's, it's just knowing it's, all together. Yeah, that's something we. Oh, I want yeah. that shit to be a surprise. We shouldn't know. We shouldn't. <laughs> we, we shouldn't know when we didn't know when we're gonna be born. So we shouldn't yeah. know when we, when we're dead. When we, yeah, when we're, however, we do die. Yeah. I think um I think death I, I think artists or people in general should look at it and really re- like, put more respect towards it definitely because there are cultures that do put respect towards oh yeah I think death is right. I think death is in my opinion I think death is beautiful because whether you believe in some sort of whatever your belief is towards what's afterwards I think really allows it to really be a beautiful thing because we have people who are on their deathbed who are paralyzed. Or we have people who are um, sick mm-hmm. and they're dying and they're on the verge of it and mm-hmm. they pass on to a better life if that's what's really out there. So I think artists, we need to um, not talk about it so loosely. Because yeah. I think that's the thing because like you're speaking yeah. into existence. Yeah. Right. You don't want to do that. The more you talk about something, the more opportunities you allow in your life. I used to yeah, say, you might end up in jail talking oof. about how many people you killed, right? <laughs> um, uh, I always would always say this. Uh, if I were to die today, I'd be happy because I've accomplished a lot in my life. But then I stopped saying that because I was like, what am I really saying? Like I'm telling, I'm, I'm speaking it that I'm okay with dying right now. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I think that's a good, I think if you, if you accept death because that's reality, we live and we die. Yeah. That's just the only two Two, there's three realities in this world. We're, get, we're born, some of us pay taxes, some of us don't, <laughs> and um, we die. Yeah. yeah. So I think death should be, I think it should be discussed in a more, in a more appropriate, appropriate manner. manner versus... Um, Just romanticizing it, like yeah. hoping and praying for it. Yeah. Well, I don't, I, don't, I don't think they're hoping to pray for it, but it's just yeah, like, yeah. like you said, speaking into an existence. I feel like Pac spoke his death into yeah, he, he, existence. Yeah. To be but I, I, I would argue like he he knew he was going to die. Not because like, you know, to, you know as far as like the hip hop answer, but yeah. from who he was. You know, and who his family was. Yeah, like who he, he was associated with. Who he was associated yeah. with. It. I mean, it's no secret. Yeah. Um, even just from like, a, according from certain individuals that hung out with him, like he already, even when he was in jail, like he knew he was going to have a short life just based on who he was related to and, and based on his last name. Yeah. yeah. That's um, crazy. It's wild, man. Yeah. That is, that's, that's wild. 
that would suck. I would. I mean, I guess he lived his life the way he wanted to live it, but fuck, man. Yeah. That's, that's, that's hardcore. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, oh, go ahead, Otto. He did do a lot of great things. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And I'm sure there's a flip side to that as well. But, well, there's always a flip side. You don't side know. To you don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What were you going to say, though, before I interrupted you? I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. It's all good. Um, huh. Guess, damn, I, I, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, let's try. I was like, oh, if I forgot, I guess it's it's not important. But, okay, uh, but yeah. Whoever's watching this, if you if you had a way to die, no, don't write that. Don't, 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 yeah, don't, don't, yeah, I was like, like, uh, don't do that. Like, don't do that. Like, <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want that. Yeah, I, don't I, I, that I didn't. Yeah, I don't want that. Right. I I don't want to read those comments. They're like, holy shit. <laughs> it's like, um, I'm gonna tell you to go see your therapist. I feel like, never mind. I'm not no, say it, that. say it, say it. Oh, like, <laughs> just say it, say it, say it. Nah, damn, I'm not, I'm not gonna touch that. I one. wish I could read your mind. I am not gonna touch that one right there, bro. Is it, is it that bad? <laughs> yeah, it's not that bad. I just don't want to speak it into existence. Yeah. Right <laughs> well, um, let's see. I think death uh, brings family together. Yeah. It does. It's a shame. It's that, a shame that, that if that's the only thing that brings them together, that's a shame. That's right? a shame. There's a book called Tuesdays with Maury. Have you guys read it? Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Okay, I recommend everybody who watches this podcast to read this book, Tuesdays with Maury. Mitch something was the author. Um, I'll give you a quick, if you guys do read it, you'll get why this happens. Um, this gentleman has a living funeral. Mm-hmm. He knows he's dying. He's sick and this and this and that. He knows like his body's decomposing pretty much. But what he does is people never smell the roses before they die, correct? Mm-hmm. We never we never get to hear the praises. Like we never get to hear what we've done to somebody's life until we are beyond this world. So what he did was rather than not hearing it all, he invited everybody over to his house and created a living funeral where everybody spoke of it then and now versus him not hearing it all, which I think is a beautiful thing. Because I don't know. I mean, it can be a beautiful mm. thing. I mean, but... you got you got to deal with the pros and cons of how you live your life. True, true. I mean, honestly, I would like to do that. Like Frank was an asshole. I'll be like, and I'll be like, this damn right I was. What'd you do? What'd you be do? Like, you're dead, Frank. Stop talking. I'm like, nah, I'm still alive. I nah, bro. This, this is your funeral. Me. You can't talk at your funeral. Damn, talk. It's a living <laughs> funeral. <laughs> I think people should read that book. Tuesdays with Maury. Go read Actually, it. yeah, that'd be good. Like on the comments. Yeah, go if you ever heard if you ever read Tuesdays with Maury or haven't heard of it or heard of it or read it. Let me know what you think about that book. We're gonna do a book discussion on Tuesdays with Maury. <laughs> well, I actually had a book club. Next one time point. on KOS, the hey. book club edition. Hey, I've had a book Tuesdays club and morning <laughs> with Nato. Tuesdays with Maury. <laughs> Poetry. Ask about this. Um, I guess going on this subject, like one thing that. My mom always told me, and this was something that we should get I your was, mom on this podcast, man. Oh, yeah, we can talk about your mom almost every time. No. Yeah, man. No, she's she's an honorary. Uh, she's an honorary KOS member. <laughs> no, 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 that would, that would not. I want her on the show, but uh, I want to ask you a question. Is this true? Your son said this. Is this true? <laughs> no, you're you. On if if that were having like. She she would kill me. Uh, I got, I got <laughs> video proof. Your son said this about you. You're you're about to <laughs> you're gonna <laughs> snitch on me. No, I, I'm not to contact. But um, this is what she always told me, like to my face. Um, she said, "I don't want you to cry at my funeral. It's like I want to see these tears mm. now. If you're gonna show any emotion to me, I want to see it now. Don't give me true. flowers. Don't cry. But because I'm true. not I'm not gonna be here She's to see it. She's not gonna see it. Yeah, exactly. And that I looked at her eye and I was like. That's real. I, I get what you're saying. Your mom's saying. an OG mm-hmm. for that. That's real. That's something real because mm-hmm. we never get to see that emotion. Like I'm pretty sure a lot of people would love to tell somebody how they feel towards somebody else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we'll never do it because it's like it's 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 a frightening moment because you feel a type of way towards somebody. Yeah. But and then it, you say it, it's too late. They're dead. Exactly. And it's a lot of even though it may give you pace, it's a lot of unresolvedness. Mm-hmm. But I mean it went dark super quick, but yeah, that's well, we that, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, want to move on to our, our next topic or uh, go ahead and check the uh, yeah, I'll go do that right yeah. now. Uh, site positive, 
perfect. <laughs> no Wait, are you really drinking the tea through that shirt, through that? Mm-hmm. What if it was dirty, full of sweat? I washed it. There you go. Ooh, Uh-oh. face scratch motive. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this anymore. You, you Gruber. <laughs> <laughs> trying to put me out to <laughs> oh, fucking goober. I mean, I wear face. I wear. I wear those masks too. When I, but I put it in. Well, I put them on my hair. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. I mean, I do wash them. I tried to get a white faced uh, Gucci mask, but they weren't selling them. Oh, uh, <laughs> hey, we should. Yeah, actually, that. someone made a meme of someone that. Someone made no. Someone actually made a white face one. It was what was cool about it were the lips. What color were they still red? They were pink, pink. and small as fuck. <laughs> Yep. I should lie. That's racist. Racism goes across the board. It does. Opinion. It goes on every level. It's been, it's been on the Latino and the Black community. Yeah. Racism exists. Let's not let's not say it doesn't. But it does. yeah. yeah. Oh, what we talking about? Oh, well, I actually had a good idea when I was making this cup of tea. Um, I'm talking fitness. We're gonna talk about that real quick because um, all right, I'm not the fittest man in the world. But you, but you, but you helped me get in shape too. So like you, you, you know, know, you know, like, you you've know. been through, you've been through your own little journey. Yeah. Through. Um, so a lot of my clients have this issue of understanding calories and how to consume proper mm-hmm. amount of food. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just going to throw this out there. This is going to be, this is me and my idea of it all. Um, in this day and age, there's so much information out there that a lot of things are probably either misinterpreted mm-hmm. or people just assume that because this is the trend that everybody's doing, it's going to work for me. Uh, agree. So we can talk about veganism, the paleo diet, carb cycling. This, this, and this, and this. I'm going to say this. Okay. Calories are calories because I know people who do, if it fits your macros, which is a macronutrient, is the grams, I'm sorry, calories that you get from protein, fats, and carbs. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep it it simple. Those are three carbo, those are three, those are macros, macronutrients. Mm -hmm. That's where you get your calories from. Protein and carbs, we get four calories per gram, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fat, there's nine. So now I'm not good at math, but let's just say I got 2,000 calories to reach on a daily basis. That's right. how many calories I need to consume to maintain. Right. So I got to figure out how many cal- how many calories from protein, carbs, and fat I need to gain 2,000 calories. Mm-hmm. So my calorie count might be different from D-Will's and Vector's. Um, I burn calories different than D-Will and Vector. So people need to understand that however you burn your calories is going to dictate the amount of calories you consume. Protein we need to obviously rebuild muscle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Carbohydrates. I'm a fan of carbs. A lot of people don't like carbs. I think carbs need to be consumed. Yeah. Carbohydrates are a source of Your energy. brain works off of carbs. Your brain works yeah. off. Oh, I carb cycle, which is when you don't take carbs for like three or four days. And I went to math class. I couldn't function. I was, I couldn't function. Your brain does, your brain actually does function. I think it's a hundred grams. I don't know. The grams, I, I might be wrong, but it might yeah. be hundred grams of carbohydrates. Okay. So he wants to gain muscular, he wants to gain some muscle mass. Um, he fasts, I'm a of fasting because when you do fast, you tend to burn more calories when you work out. You do intermittent you, fasting? I do intermittent. Well, I mean, technically speaking, any, everybody technically does, does intermittent, intermittent fasting. fasting. But yeah. what, what's your, what's your... Uh, um, three threes, every three hours. Wait, what? Every three yeah. hours a week. No, but when you fast. Oh, okay, so... um. Like, cause my you, last meal would be like at 8 p.m. Okay. And then I won't consume anything till like 11 or noon the next day. Oh, okay, for sure. But um, as soon as I eat, I eat, I eat a lot of fattening food, but I'm not talking about like like McDonald's or anything. I'm You're talking, talking about like meats, high fat high proteins? Fat, high fats, coconut oil, Protein. egg white, egg yolk, I'm sorry, that's high in cholesterol, yeah. um, almond milk. All of egg is high in cholesterol, actually. Um, See, see what I mean? Yep. Other people know more than I do. That's why I love doing what I do. Um, but that's what I will consume. I do Greek yogurt too. I stay away from only dairy I consume, I guess, would be Greek yogurt because it is dairy. Mm-hmm. But um, that's what I do. Then um, I think I wanted to say this because a lot of people are are sold on the idea of, of a diet because a diet Diets don't work. Diets don't. First you, of all, diets you have to don't. change your lifestyle. Yeah, it's a it's a complete lifestyle yeah. because if I was to tell A, B, and C, hey, A, this is what you're gonna do for a week. B, this is what you're gonna do for a week. C, this is what you're gonna do for a week. We're gonna come back and we're gonna see what you did. Chances are A, B, and C did not follow what I told them to do because they don't have that proper habits. That and just based on their the body type and just oh, yeah, and they're, and they're, how it works. It's different. So what we need to understand is. I tell everybody, this is what you need to do on to start. 
take a take a gallon take a gallon of water or take any measurable amount of water and just drink that first. Drink mm -hmm. it for a week. Do that every single day. Now, okay, cool. Week two, let's talk about <laughs> gonna be pissing all day. You're yeah. gonna be pissing all day, but you're <laughs> gonna probably lose a little bit of weight. And you're probably yeah. gonna feel a lot better about yourself. And those headaches you always have, you're probably not gonna have you're them. You're not gonna have them anymore. You're probably be um your organs will thank you, your brain will thank you, your skin's gonna thank you, your eyesight will thank you, your whole human body will thank you because you not are, your bladder. Yeah, <laughs> your bladder will be a little pissed off, but it, yeah, it will true. thank you, it will thank it will you later. Off. That's why if you haven't noticed. I random. <laughs> I'll take this to the mall and drink it. I have it in a car just for emergencies. Shoot. Um, shoot. I remember when I started like eating healthy, I would take bags of chicken to the mall. And all my friends would think I'm crazy, but yet I got the body and wanted Yeah, man. Have you seen the prices at the food court? It's expensive. Yeah, man. You're telling, you're telling me I'm crazy because I'm taking food. I to take the food my court. own food to the theater, too. Shoot. Hey, I do, too. <laughs> <laughs> We snuck it in. I took Chipotle once in the movie theater. I don't know how I got away with it. Um, but anyways, going back to the eating. Um, so that's why I tell you, but drink a gallon of water for the first week. Second week, let's, let's, because you can't completely take a habit out. You have to replace it with something. Mm -hmm. So let's just say you don't eat breakfast. Now, eating breakfast is going to be difficult because there's a few reasons that go into that. You not eating breakfast. First and foremost, mm -hmm. your body's not used to it. Mm -hmm. So... Consuming something on the crack of dawn when you wake up, your body will probably not like it because your body's not used to that. So start with something small. Second thing, you're probably like, I don't have enough time to cook. Uh, I wake up, I go to work, wake up earlier, right? Third thing is um, cut out, um, I tell people, if you drink coffee, cut out the dairy yep. or cut off the extra sugar. So let's say for the first week, eat, eat breakfast. Third week, take out tortillas. Anything that's like a carbohydrate that's not and like starchy foods. Starchy foods, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's the biggest. Regular factor. potatoes, take those out. Why? Yeah. Huh? Why? Because they're heavy in starch. I, for us, what I, from my understanding, you got, got iodine in them, all types of vitamins. Yeah, like sweet yeah. potatoes. Yeah, but I mean, God. I was told in, that from who I from who I worked with when I did bodybuilding competition, and he's an ex bodybuilder. Oh, okay. You you going off? Of, I'm off going of body off. Bo off of I'm bodybuilding. Going, I'm going, yeah, I'm going okay. off of like a. I'm going off of what is the best way for my for my education. Yeah. What is the best way to maintain a lean body fat percentage and not okay. get so heavy in the gut? Gotcha, gotcha. Because if we're trying to, everything starts in the gut. Yeah. So if we're inflamed, I'm not saying regular potatoes will give you inflammation, but they are heavier on the stomach. And if we really think about consuming more calories and food, if you eat a heavier amount of food, it's going to take longer to digest. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand depression comes from gut. And I haven't noticed a lot of times myself. It's, been, it's, like, it's proven and I've researched it on myself when, when towards the end of the month, when my money's tight and I don't have the amount of calories I know I should be consuming, I get not, I'm not going to say I get depressed, but I do get moody. Mm. I do feel a type of way. Mm. I do get all like, uh, kind of like that. But I think I was going to talk about more. Oh, um, Noah James. <laughs> he's a client of mine. He's losing a lot Mike. of weight. Hey, he's losing a lot of weight. Psych. <laughs> no one saw that. <laughs> So I think he's losing a lot of weight. I think um, fitness is a big thing that we need to talk about in the community because it could solve a lot of problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, D-Will could attest to that because D-Will was a, a mighty, a mightier D-Will. Yeah, I was a uh, obese D-Will or morbidly obese D-Will. Morbidly. Yeah, you're pretty yeah. heavy. And yeah. the dreads too. Yeah. How old were your dreads? How old were they? Long. Oh, how long? Yeah, they were about shorter length. I thought the shoulder length was very pretty long. Like almost sure length a little yeah, bit. I think they were a little bit longer because it was, was going down. No, yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Tried them down to they were, yeah, yeah, when we first met. But yeah, so <coughs> drink your water and we'll talk about more of this later. For sure. Yeah, but that's what I wanted to say. Like, don't don't buy into Herbalife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't buy into uh, Weight Watchers don't. or Optivia or, no. uh, or or the keto diet because that's also dangerous. Oh, as the well. keto keto yeah. keto high high fats. No I think carbs. that's bad. Yeah, that's that's because yeah. you shouldn't. <laughs> bacon is bad for you. Yeah, don't mess with the carnivore diet, especially. What is yeah. that? Pure that's meat. Pure meat. That's you're the, you're that's just the saying, new you, thing. God, you're asking for trouble is on it? that. Yeah, I think it was um. I think people create. This is my theory on on the on the carnivore diet. 
people who didn't like vegetables as kids were like, man, vegans, you know, they just eat plants. What if we just fucking uh, eat, eat meat. meat and just call it the carnivore diet? Yeah, I don't just like trying, to do a, trying to do it like <laughs> trainers trying to start yeah, something. Broccoli, yeah. vegetables but, uh, are important to your digestive yeah. tract and to your pooping. Yeah, but um, mm-hmm. apparently a lot of these from, I'm not, I'm not endorsing this, uh, this diet, but a lot of people said they've had benefits to their gut health and everything. The carnivore diet? Yeah, look it up. Well, you, see, I mean, you can find it all over it's YouTube. Consuming a lot of meat? Yeah, I mean, they're just eating, well, not a lot of meat. They're just, their meals just consist of meat and cheese. Oof. Uh, yeah. Isn't that going to clog <laughs> no. up your arteries? Uh, I would assume so. A lot of cholesterol. Mm-hmm. I mean, they yeah, use like, they I, get fatty meats too. It's not mm-hmm. even like a. Oh, okay. Well, not so even really heavy, heavy. No, no, they get fatty meats. Mm-hmm. They don't get like lean meats or nothing. They don't there, get like. There's this oh, book that I'm man. supposed to read. I haven't finished it. It's called yeah. um, Di- Nutrition for Your Type. Yeah. So it's a book that I'm. Um, oh, it's based off of your nationality or something? No, I'm kind of your blood type. Oh, that sounds like some. Um, some bogus stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, if you, this is my theory as to why it would be like practical. I haven't yeah. read it. Um, but I had a friend of mine, she's um, RN, registered nutritionist. She went to school for all this. She did OCHEM and all that fun stuff. That's what RN stands for? Well, no, no, registered nurse. nurse. Yeah. Reg- oh, RD, registered dietitian. Ah, I got you. Got I'm you. sorry, I confused it too. So I'd <laughs> asked her, I said, hey, um, there's this book I'm reading and I wanted to ask you um, if your take on this and what have your studies shown or what have your professors stated? Mm-hmm. And um, my thing is, I can, I say it like this. It's like, if you knew your exact blood type and if we knew the exact foods that complement your blood type and if you consume those foods that complement your blood type, think about how well your body would function. Now, we're talking to, think of it now, we'll compare it to a car. You have a Honda Civic or whatever. You put those exact make and model parts in it. What's going to happen to the car? Chances are it's going to run smooth. Mm-hmm. Now, if you think of the human body like that, what if what if that was true? What if what if if I knew that my diet or my eating needed to be because even my uncle did it. He can't. He can He's not supposed to eat black beans, but he can eat pinto beans. So it gets that detail. It, it gets that detail. I'd have to research that. That I don't know. If that sounds it's like a, that, I, it, but it, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, because here's the thing, and also yeah. discuss about how. Different various blood types came from different parts of the world and okay. we migrated to here. I I I get well. That's a, in the and I'm like it, it, is it, that is that like because I feel like you know even amongst uh, let, let's do a small group like say Native Americans. Yes, I feel mm-hmm. like Native Americans would have varying blood types. Yes, yeah. So like they would all have to eat a diet specific to that blood type. If in the book, yes. But but being in a tribal. Unit, you know, you eat what the hunter gatherers bring home. Well, so. see, at the same time, back then the hunt, there was no, they didn't have the research for this. True. Yeah. So I, I get what mm-hmm. you're saying, but at the same time, if you think about it, if but like hunter, no, but I think what I was what, what I was getting, I was like, because you said if if blood types were regional, yes, then if that tribe did all have the same blood type mm-hmm. and they were eating the same foods then everybody in that tribe would, would be super, that. super healthy. Yes. Like, because they're, they're eating towards their blood type. But yes. what about, you know, sicknesses, people who got sick during those times and, you know, wasn't healthy or, mal- or you know, super nourished as well. That's why, that's why I'm skeptical about things like that because it's like you got to... There's a lot to consider. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't write the book, but right. I could tell you this, if it's like diseases back then, I mean... Cooking meat back then was probably like the most unhealthiest thing to do because there was no way of de. How do I say cleaning? Well, no, I think they cleaned their, their, their meat pretty well. Well, I, I hope they did. I, don't, I wasn't there, so. I wasn't there. <laughs> but I mean, but at the same time, I think wouldn't blood types still be able I mean, to adapt um, to the surrounding? Over time, like doesn't the human body adapt to the environment it's in? Kind of. Well, if if that's the case, why wouldn't blood types adapt today? Maybe blood types not meant to adapt. But they... But I don't know, because it was saying that... I got to read the book. Yeah, I got to research that. I, don't, I, don't, I can't it, talk about it. Went it de- yeah, <laughs> but it went into detail, and I was like, yo, this is this is convincing enough to the details of just... It, and for me, it made sense, because it was like, okay, cool, if I knew that 
I was blood type O positive or whatever. And I knew that my blood is more receptive to eating certain, even, even vegans who are vegans to the- I'm the, plant-based. You're pla- you see, you're plant-based. But it said like your blood type, let's just say you're O, mm-hmm. your body wouldn't benefit from you. I'm, this is not how the book said, but this yeah. is me. But if, if I can sum up the book, it's saying that your blood type is not receptive to what okay. you're consuming. Okay. So you might have more negative issues because you're not consuming the proper yeah. food. But it just, it just, I don't know. It, it it gets me when it gets down to like you can eat black beans, but you can't eat pinto beans. I mean, a bean is a bean to me at the end of the day. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, that's just what I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to shit on you. Tomato, something tomato, man. Come on. I'm, try, I'm trying to. I like, sophisticated, man. I like potatoes, homie. I like potatoes. What's a potato? Potato. No, potato, P- potato. potatoes are tomato, tomato. Yeah, I like. I only eat potatoes and tomatoes. I eat tamales. You eat tamales? Oh, bro, uh, D Vegan from mm-hmm. Fontana. Wait. Shout out D Vegan from Fontana. What's that? She uh, she makes Mexican food from um. Where? She's yeah. from what's what's that? That origin starts with an M. Masa. But she be making tamales. She Mesa? be making masa. No, nah, not not that one. I got I got to look her up on Instagram. Where she again. live? Is it a restaurant? Well, no. Right. She she cooks at home, and mm-hmm. then you order online, and then she sends you a a um right, address the, to go the pick up. Delivery location. Yeah, yeah or or they could deliver to your house, depending on where you at. You should. But follow her on Instagram. Um, you know but her food should. looks so it's all vegan. You know what we should do? We should have her. Um, we should have her cook us a little plate and eat it while we do our podcast. Bro, um, yeah, next I'm week down. I'll I'll order some up and I'll go pick it up. That's marketing. Right. That's okay. a marketing time. Hey. Shout out DV. She uh, her food be looking mad fire. I'm I'm trying to go to, every time I be getting on because it goes fast. Because uh, when when I be going up a line, everything I want is already sold out. So, oh, man. so you gotta be on top of game. Yeah, I'm <laughs> doing, doing quick fingers. Yeah, man. Oh, it's man. like trying to cop some new shoes. Ooh, man. Whatever. Yeah, but pay attention to your gut. Watch okay. how your poop sits or floats. <laughs> that's actually something that they, that tells you a lot. You know, look in the toilet when you're done. Don't yeah. just flush. Don't just flush. Mm. Watch. Study yourself. Know yourself. Is this no. is this KOS knowledge of self? Yeah, man. Know mm-hmm. your poop. It's like I didn't eat peanuts yesterday. Oh, shit, <laughs> you're leaving shit. Dude. That's like oh corn. <laughs> All right, not to get not to get too gross. Yeah, yeah. shit jokes. <laughs> what, what you what you want to talk about, Mighty D Will? Um. Granted that I'm sitting here today where somebody else is supposed to be sitting here. Oh man. Yeah, let's um let's talk about professionalism and everything. And okay. being a professional and and you know, not doing no calls, no shows. I don't know if you want to drop the name of the guy who was supposed to be here. Well, technically I already talked about him a few times. Okay. Well, we'll leave it at that then. But there's also other things outside of, you know. The podcast, not everything doesn't revolve around KOS, but um, I just want to talk about you yes, know seeing yeah it does <laughs> <laughs> you know you be on Instagram you see you see rappers or or artists or whatever you want to call yourself talk about oh yeah I'm hustling nine to five or or was it uh seven. Uh, 24, 24 7, 7, 365, you 25, know. 25 8, 366. Oh, <laughs> 25 8, 366, and everything. And then I know, I granted, I get it. We're not fucking the all out show. We're not the breakfast club. We're not the wake up show or anything, but respect us, man. Mm. Fucking respect us. When we get called out to do for shows, we arrive to the location. If not 30 minutes, an hour before everything is ready to go because we're out there. We need to prepare ourselves to, mm. for what's about to go on. And when artists, when we book artists for interviews, when we book artists to come onto the show, when we book artists to, to submit work to the magazine, and it's just a laggy process where, where it's like, yo, are you about this or not? It gets very frustrating. You know what I mean? It, it, Sometimes it gets to a point where like, you know, I'm not going to respond to the person anymore. And like, I do respond back to the person because it's like, I have to show 
my responsibility and my professionalism just to get the point across to them. Like, yo, mm-hmm. just because you're lacking on what you're doing doesn't mean I'm going to lack on mine. I look at you on Instagram. You're up over here talking about, oh, yeah, you know, I'm up at 7 a.m. doing the grind. Yeah. You know, I'm up at 5 a.m. doing the grind. But, like, when it's time to actually work and do something, when we're we're building platforms for people and we're trying to to boost you as an artist and you treat us like, you know, we're we're nobody, that, that, uh, it... It it's hurts irri- you, you know what I mean? Irritating. It's very irritating. Um, Especially when we go out <laughs> our way to either book the, the venue or the yeah. spot. And it's not like, um, it's not like, I'm, like I said, I don't think I'm bigger than who I am. I know we're untapped hip hop. I know our fan base and I know who, who rocks with us and, mm-hmm. you know, who we would like to rock with us. But at the same time, it's Squad. like, you know, if you're going to be a professional, I feel like you should treat Every opportunity, you know, whether it's from the Wake Up Show, Breakfast Club, All Out Show, Knowledge Yourself, mm-hmm. in the same realm, because you never know what might happen. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you know, what if we blow up? What if we? What if we become something there's super no dope? What, there's no what if. It okay, is. when we blow up, we become something dope. We're gonna be looking at you as like. You know, when we put on our shows, when we do when we do street glyphics and everything, and we trying to look for artists, it's like, well, homeboy over here or homegirl over here, they was like, I don't know if I can rely on them. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm. And it's um, and yeah. There, there's been there's been like other issues too, like whether we broke certain artists in the past before, and then like. I mean, I understand, like, you know, certain things happen, and, like, I do appreciate, like, you know, the people that responded to us as far as, like, hey, I can't make it. But, like, at the very, very, very last minute, or, again, like, a no-show or a no-call, where it's like, uh, dude. <laughs> yeah, and it, um, yeah, that that's something that, that's why I'm sitting here today. That's why I asked to be on the show today, because I'm going to start, what was, what was old boy's name? Rick. Rick what? What was his, what's his what's his Instagram? Uh, born of an immigrant. Born of an immigrant, Rick. I know you're an awesome person. I know you you didn't mean ill to call out or not call and not show today for the for the podcast. But it would be nice in the future if you wasn't going to show up. You would let us know so that way we can replan the show and work around that. Uh, you, I've never met you. You might be an awesome person. You might be an asshole. I don't know these things. <laughs> I, I don't know these things. But, you know, professionalism is something that you have to show if you want to be in this arena. Like I said, we show this up. We show it all the time. When we can't show up for something, we let you know at least two days in advance so that way we don't hinder what you're doing as an artist. But yeah, that was, that was, that's my topic. I don't know. What do you guys think about this? Not all you haven't said it. You feel uncomfortable because I called out Rick? No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. I mean, he's my client and he's a good friend of mine, but it's I not. mean, you ain't said nothing mean of him. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's all from my heart. Nothing came from Nato's heart on that yeah, one. Dave is a good person, so <laughs> I let David be. Um, I'm not fun, but um, shoot, what am I going to say? Um, I think that, and I agree with the opportunity of being early, and I'm and I'm guilty of not. Even if you're late. Oh, I, don't, I don't care if you're 10, 10 20 minutes late. You know Give me a call. I'm, you know what I'm guilty of? I'm guilty of leaving the events early. I'm going to be honest. I know people know that for a fact. I mean, shit, I'll be tired. I'll leave an event early, but I I'm there on time. I'll, give you, I'll make sure I finish my job before I leave, though. <laughs> you know, I, and I think um, taking taking the opportunity serious, because I remember, I remember when I first came into the scene, uh, Jam Cam hit me up. He's like, yo, I want you to be on this podcast. I was like, oh, shit. I got there early. And I remember with you guys, the San Bernardino show, I stayed late, made sure to put everything away. Oh, uh, yeah. Helped you guys mm-hmm. with that. That was much appreciated because yeah. that was the first time we actually got help. From, it was cool. It was. Too. Yeah, it was. that was back in January <laughs> of last year. It was. It was there was snow at Cal State San Bernardino. Yeah, it was wild. It was, I think it was just ice, to be honest. Oh, uh, maybe, I don't know. Couldn't make snowballs of that shit. <laughs> oh, no, people... My, 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 it's like shit. chunks of ice. <laughs> I think people need to consider... I think I, I think once you're in the role... Once you're in the shoes of somebody putting an event together, 
and you know all the stress that it comes with, you learn to really reevaluate how you as right. the participant participate. Because I remember when um, I would throw my own events at the batting cages in Fontana. Mm-hmm. Uh, when an event started at 8 o'clock, I had to be there at 7. Yeah. Because Sometimes earlier. So, know? yeah, it depends what you, or you could be smart at nighttime and set up, you know, you got to yeah. take into consideration. But there's moments where, like, you, you, you as a, as a creator of the event, you have to realize everything you're going through, whether that be renting a space from somebody, mm-hmm. whether that be your own space, whether that a lot be, of time and money and effort goes into sh- events, you know, I mean? even if, even small ones, even if it's, you know, like, uh, like what we do. On a scale, you know, I mean, it's not the it's not a huge event, but a lot of planning, a lot of time, execution, a lot of effort. Yeah, it's yeah. like a two to three hour, just in a two hour three event. Um, two to three months could go into it. Yeah, and then you got people. Oh, I can't make it last minute. You know, what I mean, or mm-hmm. they just don't show up. And it's like, all right, man, this this could have been. I could have put somebody else on. Oh, we could do it. Let's talk about this. How how do you prepare for professionalism? That How do just, I prepare that for That just pro- came in my head right now. Buy a calendar. I don't prepare for professionalism. I am professional. It's I wake true. up every morning professional. Um, who said this? Zen Soul said this. Be ready so you... Stay ready so you never have to yeah. be ready. What was it? Um, Check it. I got one for you. <laughs> <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me restart this real quick. Sure. Happy. No, before I... It was about to cut out. Oh, okay, for sure. All right, go for it, guys. So we talked about Japan earlier. There's this old story about a Japanese soldier, a samurai, who was in a communal garden next to a, uh, or next to, you know, just commoners and stuff. Everybody was there. He was a, he was a soldier. He, had, he always had his sword on hand. And one of the villagers asked him, why is it that you carry your sword on hand in time of peace? He was like, I'd rather be a warrior in time of peace mm. instead of a uh, commoner or civilian, you know, in time of war. That's so, deep. like, it, it's... Wow. Like, I, I paraphrased oh, it. Oh, shit. But it's, like, that's what I live by after... See, I think, um... The book that uh, Ghost Dog was reading, that's one of the stories in it. That was one of them. Yeah. So it was like... Wait, when Ghost, I read, Stone? Ghost, Ghost Dog? Ghost Dog. Oh, I was like, yeah. the wrestler? <laughs> no, no, no. no. It's, uh, it was uh, Forrest Whitaker. Yeah. Well, wasn't there a wrestler called Ghost Stone? Like, no. no. Not, not like not, like another Oh, you talking about... um? You know, the white, the bald-headed dude. Oh, Stone Cold? Cold? Cold Stone Cold. No, not Stone Cold Steve Austin. Gold Dust? No, not Gold Dust. Wasn't there another? I could be wrong. Think you're wrong. I'm probably wrong. Yeah, cut this, cut this part. Out. <laughs> it's life. Oh, <laughs> on the edited version, now I'll make yes. a note of it. But yeah, like um, those are my thoughts on professionalism. Uh, um, I'm definitely going on to like what David um just mentioned, and this is how he, I guess, for example, was like David and I have an understanding. Like what David expects of me, even when he came to me about Untap and being a part of it, he knew from the get-go, this is without me saying like, when he asked me to come, like he knew that he could rely on me yeah. and that without, it goes without saying like, he knew I took professionalism seriously. So if I knew I was going to be late or something happened, whether it be a family issue or a car issue. I always let this man know at least a day or two if I wasn't going to make it or not, or something happened, or if I was going to be late, or if I knew I was going to be late, I will always, st- I, especially back in the day, I would always go with him to his spot and tell him, like, all right, I'll meet you there at this time. Even from an exam, oops, ex- anxiety standpoint, like, I know, <laughs> like, I, there would probably be like three or four times out of the week I'll tell him, like, hey, David, I'm going to be at this time. And even though he knows already, it'll be Tuesday. <laughs> David, hey, just to let you know, I'm going to be here at this time. <laughs> and then just another example, like, even like, for like, hey, David, um, just go on with me. I'll, meet, I'll just meet you there. There's been situations like that. And I'm sure I drove him crazy a few times. But 
there was that understanding between us, like, yo, like, if I'm not going to make it or I'm going to drop the ball, we'll let you I am letting yeah. this man know. Exactly. So he can plan accordingly and go on without me. And then I would catch up with him. It's like, all right, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Whatever I need to catch up, just throw it to me and I'll get it. Yeah, so let me, let me, before you, before, I'm sorry to cut you off, but no, no. Let, me, let me pose this question to the audience, man. Is there a time or a situation where you put in a lot of, of work and effort into anything where you, you invited, you know, someone to come through and showcase their art or their work. And, you know, it was a no call, no show, you know, let us know in the comments, let us know how that made you feel. And, you know, do you, do you rock with that artist anymore? And if you don't, you know, I mean, let us know why. So that way we don't try to book them. (laughs) (laughs) Um, in no way, this is like no diss, this is like no disrespect, but it has to be addressed. I'm completely disrespectful with my shit. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like with me, like I, we, yes, we get like, you know, we're not the breakfast club. We're not, you no, know, we're not whatever yeah. is the, the, the biggest or, or what's trending. And you know, I'm, we're not assholes. We know shit happens. We know, you know, people... Have lives, have families, have have things to do out there. It's just, I mean, no shit. Just just let us know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's all we ask. I sound like I sound like a desperate girlfriend right now. Like, hey, just call me, babe. <laughs> <laughs> but that's I true. mean, but the the point is is professionalism and just you know, just let us know because we do take note of that and we don't forget. Yeah. So if you no. Know, because there has been what? to the past. I was late today. Yeah, I know. Is that why you're looking at me? It's not professional. I text. Well, you. I, that's not why I was looking at you. Oh, I was just gonna ask you a question, but <laughs> <laughs> I was late today. I forgot my question. No, but he did let us know. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it's his show, part his show. It's so. Not it's much like, of a show. Well, it's your two show, so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here when people uh no call no show. That's my new gig. No call no show. So we I'm like the Green Power Ranger before he became a main character. You know, I show up every once in a while and just let people have it. Isn't he? <laughs> as I dip my tea bag. Oh, that sounded corny as fuck. That didn't sound right at all. <laughs> dip my tea bag in my cup. What's that shit? What's what's the thing? It's like uh Sipping on tea, is that what people do nowadays? As I sip my tea and talk shit amongst my friends to other people behind Instagram. <laughs> You're sipping on tea. Yeah, I think oh, yeah. spill the tea. Oh, yeah, spill the tea. I'm sorry. It's too much to keep up with. I'm not going to spill that tea because this is it's not good. my house. And yeah, I made it, so don't spill my tea. It's, it's all right, tea. It's a bag of tea. It's not like. I took my time, put my water. I'm just kidding. You just used the hot water dispenser over there on the water machine. I don't see it. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, bro. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I keep thinking this leg stand is your foot. But it keeps keep every time I touch, it, I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Pretend it is my foot and don't touch it again. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that works. I'm just fucking with you, bro. You know I love you like a brother. Hey, little brother. Just kidding, so. <laughs> you missed. I was all looking at the. I, I was just looking at the screen. I'm all looking at the I'm screen. Like, like, I was like, huh? I'm all like looking at the screen. Like, uh, why am I missing? Uh, but um. So how you guys want to wrap this? Oh man, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. How you want to wrap this up? I think that's a, that's that's all I had on my chest and my heart to talk about today. Um. Uh, let's see. I mean, my. Pretty much just covers it. I mean, sure. I mean, it needs to be what's said, and we'll just leave it at that. But on the other hand, um, going back into uh, productive culture, uh, if you need some podcast services, <laughs> you know where to reach him. Come to productive culture. Free. Free. First, yeah, first, uh, first podcast first, free. Just drop KOS's name. Yeah. And uh, visit uh, productive culture forward slash podcast. Hey. I know this is probably going to be afterwards, but I'm dropping a music video soon. Oh my God. Nice. This is not the platform or the place where you'll be doing nice. it. I'm just joking. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> Can't bring you nowhere. I'm here. This is my time. 
Wait a minute. If you Don't see him on a new album? <laughs> oh, I, yeah. Well, I mean, I dropped it a while ago, but Escape the Trap is still available. Um, He's selling him out of his trunk. So if you see him, just I, I, I literally am selling him out of my trunk. I'm, I'm slaying. <laughs> I was just joking. But I'm right. slaying. I got albums for sale. <laughs> T-shirts coming soon. Hey. I might sell D. Will. He's very valuable. I don't. I don't. I don't, I'm not it's to be too sold. Late. Too late. I'm I already got to be sold. Put up, huh? <laughs> Hello? My soul is not for sale. Oh, yeah. D-Will, how much you want? Uh, well, well, they want to talk to you. Because hey, they know already. Uh, you can't afford it. But that's all I wanted to say. For sure. Uh, Wait, what do, you, what, do you, what do you normally say when you're here? When I'm here? Yeah. Don't you want to tell them the, the family motto? Oh. Yeah. I mean, okay, yeah. So I feel comfortable when you say I don't. You know, that's don't, your, that's you your feel, thing. I don't. All right, so I like to end off with the untapped hip hop family model and the untapped hip hop tagline. Uh, you know, hustle like you don't have a plan B and fuck them like you ugly. A lot of people ask me what that means. If you know, you know. I mean, it's exactly what it sounds like. And tap into your potential. Mm-hmm. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good night, everyone. Good night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, be sure to follow us at uh, Untapped Hip Hop. Uh, that is all social media platforms through Snapchat, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Not all, of course. Uh, New Age Takeover. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, New Age Takeover, or I am New Age Takeover. If you're trying to get in shape, I just talked about nutrition, New Age Athletics on Instagram and on Twitter. And you can catch me in the 25th hour. I am the Mighty D. Will. Uh, you know, if you see me on the streets, don't talk to me. You might slap me. <laughs> Peace. Peace. KOS. Yeah.